I'd like to now call upon Jess's higher self, please. We have some questions we would like confirmed. We're here. Thank you so much. Are you able to tell me the significance of the blue moon? The blue moon refers not to the colour. The blue moon is more an event where two full moons occur in one calendar month. So we have a blue moon on the 31st of October, which is just gone. It is very rare. It is a rare occasion. It's a very powerful day. Just can see aliens flying around. That is, it's the activation of activation. Ah, it's activation of light bodies. On the blue moon. Is there any other information you would like to share with us about that? We're just showing just ships flying around. It's a massive day for activation. It's a very rare occasion. It doesn't happen very often, but it's a big day of activation. It's The day of beaming energy down. Do you get a sense of what ships, um, who who are behind those ships? Arcturians, the Galactic Federation. Fantastic. Thank you. Is there any other information that you want to share with us? It's the start of the starting point of the start. It's the starting point of the, this doesn't make sense, but it's the starting point of the start of the upgrades and moving towards the crystalline bodies for the ones going earlier. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. And now, um, are we able to ask about the significance of this date, the 11th of the 11th, 2020? So the 11th of November, 2020. Is there a significance there? Yes. Um, just lots of dark darkness. Something big is going to happen on that day. And it's going to cause a flight or fight response. Uh, many deaths. It's a powerful day. It's a powerful day. Powerful energy on that day. Mm, something cosmic. Big powerful energy surge. which will cause a lot of death. Thank you. Is there any other information you want to share with us about that? It needs to happen. It may seem doom and gloom for some people, but for the ones that can see the bigger picture, that are moving more towards the 5D mindset, they will be okay because they can see the bigger picture of it all. So it needs to happen. Please just know that we'll be okay. You'll be okay. And we will be there to protect you. You will be uh, protected anyway. You'll be, you'll be upgraded. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, what does it mean, um, and will this happen, to have the Insurrection Act? Will this happen, and what does it mean? Insurrection. Um... Insurrection won't happen like you think it will. <sighs> There's some information that we don't want to give you because it's not going to it's not going to serve a purpose right now okay thank you um i respect that what information can you give me about it Twenty first of November. Day of insurrection. So there is there's a day of it, or is that when it um, is implemented? Day one, the day of insurrection um, refers to day one. Okay. It, it was, Who's behind the act? I think they've just woken me up. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. I don't think they want us to know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll pause. I fully understand that. Hang on. Am I able to call in the subconscious or the higher self, please? Yes, we're here. Thank you. Why did you kick my client away? Mm, we're sorry about that. There's just things, have, a few things have changed. Um, we don't like giving you wrong dates and information that's not going to serve you at this point so we know that you guys want to know things and we totally get that but um, there's just things that aren't going to serve you right now at this point and we don't want you distracted by acts that the president signs or um, you know Trump is behind a lot of this but we don't um, we don't think it will serve you any purpose right now because things are always subject to change. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It does. It does. And can we confirm, did Jess know about this before the session? She has no idea what it means. She's even thinking right now, what the fuck is the Insurrection Act? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And this was the purpose of the last three sessions that I've had with Andre Kane and Jess is to ask them very similar questions and see what their subconscious has to say, just for out of interest and curiosity, um, how each person will respond to these questions. Yes, yes, yes. We've we've seen that, and we, Jess has been like, "Oh my God, I'm going to say something wrong. I'm going to say something wrong. I just know it." So <laughs> we. Um, we totally get that and we understand. Yeah. So if you can relax and she doesn't need to feel any pressure at all, it's all on you, son Connie. So, um, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all on me. <laughs> to entertain us and to see how um, these blind sessions work. 
Exactly. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. We do like it. We like it. It's good. It's good for us too because we like, you know, we like little games and we like to play around as well. We're not all serious all the time, so it's fun. It's great. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, in terms of the souls of people who have passed on, who have not fully crossed over, shall we say, um, how can we help them and um, how is the best way to help them cross over if they are what we would sort of um, generically call lost souls? Do we use, um, do we do this in sessions? Uh, to help them cross over, a lot of them haven't crossed over due to the vibrations of the earth, the low frequency, but now that the vibrations are rising, the frequency is rising, they are actually able to cross over. They were stuck here due to the dense uh, vibrations of the earth. They were lost, but now that the vibrations are rising, they are actually finding their way home again. So it's not needed to, do, to uh, set them free through sessions. They will get home. Thank you. Is there any other methods that they could get home with if they were sort of distracted? They usually get distracted by third dimensional drama. So the best way to help them get home is to not delve yourself in uh, fear mode. So the more fearful people are, the more left brain thinking, the more the, um, the souls will get trapped. But ultimately, the more we raise our vibrations. So just think positively, um, raise your own vibration and that will help them. Basically they can ray, uh, <laughs> just like a wave, they can ride the wave of, of, of high vibration frequency all the way home. Thank you. And will there be anyone else that will be assisting them um, before, is it important for them to be moved off um, and helped before the event? They will be moved off. They will, as we're beaming all of our energy and upgrading, they are also on a level getting upgraded as well, which is helping them move off. So we are helping them um, as we are helping you and you are helping them as we are helping you. So they will get lifted off um, as you guys upgrade and um, get a you know a very high vibrational frequency out there. So we will be able to help them move on? Yes, just simply by raising your frequency, which we are helping you with. So basically, it's sort of like a little, uh, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, basically. We're upgrading you, you're uh, raising your vibration, which is helping the, the dense vibrations of Earth lift, uh, which is also helping them move on. Okay. Thank you. I was just wanting to clarify whether it was just me now could help them outside of a session or were you meaning that I'd have to wait till I was um, evolved in my light body? No, we can, as you guys are, you guys have been upgrading and, you know, um, raising your vibrations for a long time now, for months. So as you've been doing this, you've been freeing these lost souls. Um, so there's not actually much more of them left, um, contrary to popular opinion. There's not much of them left because we've been doing so much upgrading. It's helped lift the, let's say, blanket of dense, dark energy off of them. And they've been able to walk home, walk to the light and cross over. So they are, you, we can, you, we can help them if you would like us to in this session, but it, it's not really needed because it's kind of like a natural process that's happening on its own. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, and then in terms of um, Jesus Christ consciousness, um, uh, is Jesus Christ having a second coming? Christ consciousness, Jesus Christ is, the Christ consciousness is all of us or all of you. So raising your vibration and going into the fifth mindset is the coming of Christ, is the coming into Christ consciousness. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the reason he's called Jesus Christ, it was because he was coming into Christ, he came into Christ consciousness. 
Jesus Christ isn't, Christ isn't his last name, Christ is a consciousness. So basically when we hit Christ consciousness, when you hit Christ consciousness and you ascend to 5D, that is you coming into Christ consciousness. So he's not going to be physically here on earth. You are, the temple of heaven is within. So the Christ consciousness is within. So when you ascend to 5D, that is you coming into Christ consciousness. So Christ consciousness isn't one being, it is all. fantastic thank you so much love that and in terms of um i saw it in some clouds yesterday um that was us oh hi <laughs> <laughs> yes we know we saw you joe <laughs> that was um, us we knew you'd see us <laughs> right well, thank you. And so um, that was the Palladians. Is there any other beings in your ship? That was a Pleiadian ship. Mm -hmm. uh, your ship was, uh, there's, there's about a <laughs> hundred other ships that were above us. So uh, it, we like to, um, we are the clouds basically. And sometimes we like to make it so obvious. So we get the attention of the likes of you and people who are aware that we are here because we just like to show you that you're safe and you're protected. And that was a Pleiadian ship. Um, we just we were playing spies, basically. We were just there to say, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> um, we're here. Hello. <laughs> um, but your sh Arcturian ships were right above us. We were um, kind of just hanging out. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It's very interesting. Um, I finally took photos of it too and I shared it with the others. So that was, I'll let them know. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you very much. And then uh, finally, can you tell me um, what are, um, the term backdrop people, uh, what do you have to share and tell us about them? So those are just people that are just here to basically fill the gap. They're not here on a mission. They don't, well, in a way they're here for a mission, but they're not higher advanced people. They're kind of just, uh, let's just say, they are um, cast members that don't have a real purpose. They're just here to fill the fill the gaps. So they're just people walking around to make this illusion kind of seem more real, you know. So um, they're like mannequins that are live, alive mannequins that are here to just um, make everything look normal and keep the illusion going. Okay, fantastic. And as a rough percentage of people, the numbers of these backdrop people versus uh, real people, what is that percentage? 60-40. So, is so it there's a lot more backdrop people. So 60% backdrop people, 40% not. Fantastic. And I'm assuming the backdrop people don't go to New Earth? They don't go to New Earth, that's correct. They're going to stay here. Um, some of them uh, some of them are beings that just wanted to experience the turmoil, but uh, most of them are just um, kind of mindless zombies walking around until the Earth kind of distracts, really. Okay, thank you very much. And we were guided to be shown another QHHT petition session where they were talking about how a handsome man who did a peace treaty um, was going to actually impact the world negatively. Um, who were they referring to? This is not someone that has come to light yet. Um, this person will actually, this person will be well known after we ascend. So it's not anyone that we will know now. He will kind of take over um, in the coming end days of the world. So once uh, you've all uh, ascended to the new planet, this person will come forward and uh, people will think he's amazing. He's putting on a facade, but he's uh, he's like the, the, CC, the Chinese Communist Party. He's got a bad agenda. But none of you have to worry about that because you won't be here. So it's... Um, 
none of really your concern. You don't really, you're not going to be affected by it. So it's uh, all the people that will be staying here will be affected by it, but not you guys. So there are petitioners and their clients then that are going to be staying on the old earth? Yes, there will be because some practitioners uh um, some practitioners haven't actually, they're practitioners, but they're not practitioners for the right reasons. Some of them have uh, specifically become QHHD practitioners to spread uh, negativity. And um, that'll be like the new norm on the new, on the old earth. Uh, they'll continue to be QHHD practitioners, but they'll be spreading fear. So yes, some uh, QHHD practitioners um, have been put here to spread fear and propaganda and they won't be ascending to the new earth. And out of curiosity, um, how does the subconscious like work through that then? Um, why is it hard for the subconscious not to sh share the bigger and the bigger information and the truth or or is it because you know the purpose in their life contracts and therefore, you give them the limited information or the, is it mistruth? No, it can't be mistruth. It's not hard to the subconscious because the subconscious doesn't feel the same emotions that a human body feels. The subconscious um, can choose not to feel sadness and um, indulge in, you know, three-dimensional egotistical behavior. So the, third, the subconscious is a higher being and it knows the bigger purpose here. It signed up for this and it is, it's, it's what it, it wants to do. Um, of course, there's free will and it can change. A human can change its contract if he wants to, but um, the subconscious always sees the bigger picture of things as does the higher self. So uh, there's no sadness. There's no upset. There's no, nothing upset. The, the subconscious is not upset. Um, it just, it's it, what it's signed up for and it's going to learn the lessons that it wants to. Okay, thank you. And so the people that are staying on the old earth, um, they're not asking the bigger questions about say like new earth and if someone's on the, who's going to go to the, if someone's going to stay on the old earth and they ask in a QHHC session about the new earth and if they're going, will they be told the truth or will they be told that they're staying on the old earth? They will always be told the truth. The, the client will always be told the truth um, from their subconscious because it's very vital to them. Um, a client could be going to the new earth, but the practitioner might not be. So um, they also, the subconscious can hold back some information if it does feel that the QHHT practitioner isn't going, you know, isn't, hasn't got the right agenda. Um, or we will just merely wake the client up and uh, kind of block, block them from seeing um, a lot of stuff about the new earth because um, it will trigger the practitioner's ego if they are staying on the old earth. So we are very careful with that because um, sometimes there are clients that are going to the new earth and then QHHT practitioners are staying on the old earth and it triggers their ego when they talk about it. So we do block them a little bit. Um, if a person was going to the new earth, they would have a better session with you, Joe, we, um, as opposed to a practitioner that wouldn't be going. So we would not put up any blocks and we would make sure that um, that we are getting as much information out as we can because we would feel more comfortable around you and we would give um, information more freely. Is there any Tata science that you can find out whether a practitioner is got the right agenda or the wrong agenda for any future clients interests yes they should listen to other sessions and see how they ask questions see how they react to questions about new earth and old earth and see if they get triggered and see if they laugh at it you can always tell use your intuition you can always tell um if a practitioner hasn't got the right um your best interests at heart so always listen to your intuition it's your guidance system um but it would definitely help to listen to sessions beforehand of that practitioner um listen to their voice listen to their voice and see if it resonates with you if it see if it gives you a calming feeling or it makes you feel a bit agitated that's always a good telltale sign as well yeah 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 good
good, good information. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so that completes our, um, our, uh, our experiment.